Well, excuse me. I am about eight minutes late here, and I'm terribly sorry. But as you might, uh, if you've been following the, me the last couple days, or the last month or so, you uh, had noticed that I'd gotten very, very shaggy. And uh, Constance just couldn't. She put her foot down and said, I'm giving you a haircut and a beard trim to th this morning. So just a few minutes ago, I was uh, uh, in our bedroom barber shop with uh, the master uh, barber, St. Constance. And uh, so I've just popped out of the shower. It's probably still not combed uh, correctly, but here I am with a new, the new lawn for a while. I sort of had to do it because I have a, uh, an online uh, workshop that I give uh, th later this afternoon for the good people that inherited uh, Pantheacon. And uh, it's, it's now called Between the Veils. And uh, they're doing a lot of it live. I wish I could uh, uh, be part of that, but I'm still not venturing too much uh, into the public until uh, uh, I feel it's a little bit uh, safer to get out there and mingle among a bunch of people. And not only that, uh, even in the best of times, every time it seemed like, every time I went to uh, uh, San Jose for Pantheacon, I had a wonderful, wonderful time, met hundreds of people. Uh, I would do a little show and then I would do a, uh, uh, a talk and plug one of my newest projects and, and such, uh, but mostly just mingle with, with friends, old and new, and I would always come home sick. I'd always catch the flu. I'd always catch bronchitis. I would, and uh, for very many years, uh, I would drive up with my friend, uh, Donald Michael Craig, and uh, and for years, uh, along with his uh, wife, uh, Holly, and we'd make a thing out of it. It, it just we look forward to it every every year. And uh, Michael has uh, since passed away. But anyway, one year we came home from Pantheacon, and we both were starting to sneeze in the car on the way home and there was a, a, a blizzard on the grapevine so we had to take the Pacific Coast Highway home which is like three hours out of our way and uh, we both got pneumonia and uh, we were extremely ill for well, I wasn't back to normal for a couple of months, so. Uh, but I digress. Okay. Uh, so I'm trying to get my head wrapped around uh, what I'm going to do for the workshop this afternoon. And I'm sure you can look it up on the internet. It's Between the Veils Conference. I'm sure you can register. Anyway, I, I've sort of billed today's uh, uh, talk about uh, Enochian magic. What do I do with all this stuff? And indeed, uh, you could say that and ask that same question about any magical system or technique. What, what do I do with it? And I'm sure there are plenty of people to tell you, Here's what you do with it. Do it this way. This is the system. This is my system. Okay, if you follow these rules, this will, this will uh, uh, 
uh, occur. And if you do it incorrectly, you're doing it incorrectly. Now, you do magic to make yourself a magician. And uh, although you uh, get a certain amount of education from learning the, the basics and, and understanding the universe that each of the systems of magic, uh, uh, for convenience sake, uh, have you uh, work within that universe. But you do it for your own magical edification. So you can spend literally many, many years uh, getting to know the, the historical foundations of uh, uh, the Enochian system of magic. You can learn how the Golden Dawn developed the system into uh, uh, this uh, el elemental uh, uh, universe on one side and this etheric universe uh, 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 along with it in the same way that uh, 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 you would learn objective, subjective uh, expressions of anything in life. And you could look at the uh, Enochian system as the etheric magic is, uh, say, comparable to the tarot trumps, and the elemental magic is comparable to the tarot lesser arcana. Working with the same universe here, but uh, 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 different concepts in the same way that spirit is looked at differently than the elements. Okay, so what I wanted to briefly discuss is uh, try to at least answer the question and, and give us all permission to uh, be our own magical inno innovators when it comes to Enochian magic. And someplace and uh, it won't do you any good to try to look it up because it's in uh, uh, material that is uh, unpublished material. Um, Crowley mentioned something that uh, of a practical nature uh, concerning Enochian magic that uh, should be of great interest to those of us that work uh, uh, with uh, angelic uh, uh, communication and literally angelic intercourse. And uh, the, the idea of using and uh, taking advantage of the levels of consciousness associated with the, the elemental tablets and the hierarchy of angelic spirits uh, uh, resident in the elemental tablets uh, in the same way as, as we think of uh, uh, Goetic magicians using uh, Goetic spirits to do something really practical, some everyday uh, uh, heavy lifting. So in other words, each of these angels or facets of consciousness or fractals of consciousness represented by the elemental tablets are capable, are available to be contacted individually and a relationship formed with them. And, and uh, in the particular context that, that uh, I first was introduced to this idea, uh, it was sort of Crowley's view of, well, if I was going to uh, 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 be involved in a creative act 
of causing some kind of change to occur in conformity with my will, if I was going to come into intimate relationship with a, uh, with a particular spiritual uh, force in order to create something in the same way that, that a, a mother and father come together to create another living child, how would I do it? Which of these spirits on the Enochian tablet would be uh, 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 capable of literally mating with uh, to bring forth the object of my operation? And those of you who are familiar with the, the, the work, some people think it's controversial work of Jack Parsons uh, uh, in the, the later uh, uh, part of his career, uh, called the Babylon working. Uh, and uh, others might be familiar with uh, uh, experiments that uh, uh, Parsons may or may not have been uh, uh, doing uh, uh, with uh, that were recorded supposedly at the, at the time, recorded by L. Ron Hubbard was his scribe. And uh, you hear all you hear all sorts of things, and of course, I wasn't there, so I can't say for sure what was going on. But it was it was this idea of of this uh, uh, greater and lesser marriages between spiritual uh, uh, forces represented and named by the Enochian tablets. And uh, it was suggested that the, that the higher on the spiritual hierarchy uh, of these forces, the, the angel or spirit is, the more unpractical it would, it would be. It'd be like, uh, uh, you know, it's really easy to invoke an archangel because they're just so freaking huge. There's only the one way of looking at it is there's only four archangel <laughs> angels, and uh, if you apply them into a directional thing, everything between north and south, when you're facing this direction, is Raphael. Okay, you don't have to do much to invoke Raphael. Raphael's already there. Okay. And so it's so huge, so universal that of practical, practical uh, potential for saying, Raphael, go do a chore for me. Raphael, go do some heavy lifting for me. I went to, you know, I, I want a new car, Raphael. Well, Raphael pretty much doesn't give a shit whether you need a new car. Okay, uh, of course his force will be involved in you getting that car, but it's it's like going to the general and asking and trying to order the general to uh, peel potatoes in the in the KP. No, the general's involved because he's part of that hierarchy. But he's not going to go peel those potatoes for you. It's going to be a private that peels the potatoes. And that private is in the pecking order, is in the chain of command that leads all the way back to the general, if you see what I mean. And so the, the speculation uh, was go for something pretty small on the ele elemental uh, uh, chain of command that would be uh, appropriate appropriate elemental mix let's say uh, for the specific uh, thing that you would like to create or the thir certain change you would like to occur in your life and this is where the art form of being a magician comes into play. Uh, it was suggested that the cherubs 
the Caribs of the lesser angles uh, of the Enochian tablets are perfect for this kind of thing because you've got, uh, uh, first of all, you've got four major Caribs for each of the sub angles, fire, water, air, earth, uh, of each elemental tablets. So in a sense, you've got uh, uh, f four major Karubic angels to work with on each of the elemental tablets. So if it was you're working with the earth tablet, you'd have earth of earth, air of earth, fire of earth, and water of earth. Okay. Now, if your if your uh, object of your operation was to create uh, uh, something or manifest something uh, on the material world, the material plane, you're not dealing with a big philosophical thing, or you're not dealing with a big romance thing uh, in, in particular. You're you're actually wanting to have uh, some heavy lifting done on the material plane. Then you might turn your attention to the elemental tablet of Earth, uh, which has its own hierarchy of angels, and there's a system, and there's rules for for triggering that entire thing. It's all. It's all in the book that it's laid out. It's laid out how to get to that particular carob. Now the carob is the four squares that appear right above the Calvary crosses of each of the subangles. So uh, there would be the great table. The sub-angles are these squares like there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. Okay, is this the reform tablet? Yeah, okay. Uh, the carob is the four squares. Its name is the four squares squares above the arms of each of those Calvary crosses. They're easy to get to. We got a whole uh, a chart of the order of ceremony of which uh, uh, angels you need to uh, uh, address and invoke to do it. Here's the tablet of earth. Okay, there's a full tablet of earth. Now the Earth subangle is this subangle right here. Okay, and here's the Calvary cross that goes there. God, I can't. <laughs> this is driving me crazy to do it this way. Calvary cross is there and there, and the carob is right above the arms of that Calvary cross. One, two, three, four, like that. So this would be Earth of Earth. The, the Carib's name would be Osank, or O-C-A-N-C-E. And we know its, uh, its boss is the Calvary Cross itself, Abalt. And Arbiz. And we know all of the calls to, to, to get that. Plus, we've got, uh, if we want to get an idea of what that angel might look like, we have all of the clues on its, uh, uh, the particular elemental mix uh, that, uh, that we, elemental mix, like what colors on the, on the sides of the pyramid. But anyway. Is this an objective angel that's living in a uh, on your tablets in the closet? Yes and no. It's already living inside you. It's already in you. Okay, it can't be anywhere else. And you're just getting in touch. This is just a procedure for you to get in touch with what is already there. And we've got the luxury of being able to give a name to it, to have the spelling 
of its name and an idea of a form we can create knowing its particular elemental mix. And it's that that you have your whatever your intimate relationship is, whether it's intellectual or emotional or romantic, whatever, the Enochian system allows you to pinpoint that particular aspect of yourself that you've never had conscious interface with before. And the Enochian calls and uh, the procedure of uh, ev evoking the entire hierarchy uh, to get to that is a practical way of uh, uh, applying the Enochian system to your particular uh, magical work. And no two magicians are alike, so certainly no two Enochian magicians are alike. And uh, once you have the basic tools and know the procedure how to go anywhere and do anything with the system, then the real magic becomes, what the fuck do I do with this? And for that question, nobody has the answer except you. But anyway, that's my little ramble for today. I'm sure it does, doesn't make sense to, uh, it might not make sense to anybody. But that's just what tumbled out of lawn today with his new haircut. So, that's Saturday. Go out and play, everyone. Don't do any homework. And I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully, for Sunday school with my new haircut. Continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Loves the law, love under will.